everyone. Jim here from Discovery Divers coming at you from Japan. Uh, today's topic is uh, SMB or signal marker buoy. Um, they're those balloons we use on the surface for uh, before and after surfacing so boats don't run us down. Um, so I'm going to talk about that yeah, today. So the first thing I'm looking for in an SMB actually is size. And uh, while it is true that size matters like in many things in life, we'll talk about that later. Um, for me, if, it, if it's not going to fit easily into a pocket, I'm going to be very tempted not to have it with me. And the SMB that's sitting on shore somewhere is the most useless SMB, right? So uh, for me, the biggest thing is going to be size when it folds down. And this is about the perfect size. This is about a meter long. And we'll talk about that again later as well. Um, but that will fold down with either a bungee cord, sometimes a, uh, a wrap from uh, where they, uh, the hook and loop fastener, uh, Velcro they'll use as well sometimes. I don't have a preference, uh, but that's about how small I like it to, to uh, fold down. And of course, it's going to be with a spool. Talk about that later as well. Um, but uh, that will fit in the pocket shorts that I wear. And I highly recommend you have some kind of a pocket on your wetsuit or some pocket shorts. Okay, let's start. As well before we get there right so uh, color I strongly prefer this uh, day glow color and it's kind of reflecting off the light right now it doesn't it's not exposing very well but um, uh, between between this and this uh, study after study shows that this is more visible in almost every every situation 99.9% .9 .9 except for one situation when uh, the diver is between so the boat vantage point and the sun is behind the diver. In that one case, uh, you can imagine, right, this is, might get lost in the light a little bit compared to this. However, the orange is less visible in virtually every other situation. So I prefer, prefer this, this color. Um, people will tell you in different parts of the world, this means different things. Uh, this is going to mean I'm okay, but I'm signaling. This is going to mean emergency, come pick me up. I haven't found that to be the case, but best case is communicate with your boat captain before you even get in the water and say, hey, captain, by the way, uh, if you see this come up, these are the things it could mean. Maybe you have a plan. You have to have this. We'll talk about that as well, right? All right, so what am I looking for? Open that up. Um, on the bottom, there's going to be some sort of a connection point for the spool, right? Uh, a ring is best, right? And it's just going to unfold. Okay. Let's start from the top. All right. Uh, so at the top of this unit, there's a reflective surface. I believe this is called Solus. Yep, Solus. And uh, so that would be at night. Um, God forbid you're stranded at night and boats are searching for you. It will reflect off this, right? They've got a logo here. That's their choice. Uh, over here is a, a packet for a glow stick actually um, you can put a glow stick for if you are night diving you know it's going to come up at night someone will see that on the surface i've also heard that people could use this for a message um, you know i carry a wet notebook you could tear off a page throw that in there send it up in an emergency tell them what you need i need more air i need more deco gas um, etc um, coming down so you can see this is uh, about a hands width um, again, this is a happy medium for size. Bigger is more visible. And for me, uh, for general training and not too far from shore and you know moderate boat dives, this is enough for me, just about a meter long. Right. Okay, getting down to the bottom, here's the business end. Uh, first thing you'll notice, right, this is a closed SMB, right? They're also open SMB where you can inflate from the bottom. Personally, I'm not a fan of those uh, for two reasons. Uh, one reason is because it makes them larger because you have to add on that bottom fill section. And second, I do a lot of training, uh, train a lot of divers, and that fill from the bottom often brings water in with it. And I often pull them back down to take the water and air out. And the water is really hard to get out. Um, so it, as a more flexible bag, it might be nice to have. Personally, I find it, it kind of gets in the way. Uh, this is the fill that I'm usually using. Um, it actually has uh, an attachment there where you could use your inflator hose. I avoid that because it's one more thing to get caught in here to bring you up, which is one of the, the top 
uh, areas of concern with when you're launching an SMB, right? So this one is designed, put in your mouth, you have to push it and then inflate. Right, and then when you release it, it, it holds that air, right? And that's what I would do underwater. So I, I have my, my regulator in my right hand and I would go to this. I believe we'll have a skills video on this uh, afterwards sometime, right? Okay, next, um, this is the big game changer between uh, a serious SMB and uh, just a surface only SMB, right? Uh, in Florida, um, I believe in most areas, it's a rule there that you have to have a marker buoy when you're at the surface so that boats know where you are and they're not gonna hit you. There's a lot of boat traffic in Florida. Um, and uh, however, some places it's very handy to launch this before you get to the surface, right? And in that case, you're gonna need one of these. And you've probably seen this. It's the same as the one on your BC, right? And like in that back uh, corner or some of them are different places, right? This is gonna let the air out. This is an overpressure valve. And the reason why that's nice is, uh, so launching from um, your safety stop depth, some dive sites actually require that. I've heard that, Pal I've never been to Palau. I've heard that Palau uh, requires it, at least one person in the group. Some places, we dive, uh, Mikomoto requires it. Um, there, are so, there are a few other places, uh, if you're doing deco or light deco, or if you're gonna do a safety stop, uh, you have a marker there that, that everyone can just kind of hang with, it's kind of nice. So if, like any kind of a, a sealed bag, right, your lungs included, if you filled this or nearly filled this at five, six, 10 meters and it went to the surface, it's gonna explode if it doesn't have this, right? So this uh, is what we look for in an SMB. So that will be the basic uh, setup that, that I would be looking for. Now, if I were doing something above average, for example, let's say I did go to Palau or Indonesia or somewhere where I'm doing some kind of really extreme boat dives and by by extreme I would mean one far from shore and two has uh, either has or has the potential for serious currents right in that case I'm probably going to go about double the the height and double the width of this SMB uh, if if not being seen means not living uh, you know being being swept swept so far away you wouldn't be found. I'm gonna be carrying a huge one of these uh, and I'll also carry some sort of, a, I believe they call them e -perbs. It's a personal beacon and communication device for the ocean. And uh, that's what I would most definitely be carrying on any dive where not being found equals uh, not living. And there's a pretty good chance of not being found uh, if you're really far out there with some serious currents, right? Okay, I've got this folded back up. Let's have a look at spools. Um, I've, got, I've got two different designs here, and neither one is my preferred spool, actually. Uh, not by design, but by size. So these are both um, probably about 50 meter spools, and I, I personally like a 30, uh, 30 meter spool, something that's about 100 feet. And the reason is, it's still big enough for me to use from safety stop depth down to maybe 21 meters which is where uh, deco stops generally start for light deco dives. It makes a nice platform. Um, but also, it's getting into the size factor, right? I want as small as possible for my 90% use, and then I know I'm gonna uh, not be tempted to leave it on the shore, right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, actually, now instructors now are, are required to have some sort of a signal device, so it makes it very easy. Anyway, I like smaller than this, but let's have a look. Uh, this is the normal pattern, right? It's got the holes uh, going around, and, and that's so that you can clip your double ender into here, right? That's how we lock the line. Okay, you've got the line here, and then to lock it off, you're going to put it through a hole and lock it, right? Um, Generally, I'll show you how I tie the end of the line. It's not like this. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to make a huge loop like this, right? And then just at the top, I'm going to make another small loop like so, like this, right? And what that's gonna do is, so I'm going to uh, actually put this through my loop here. This is how I'm gonna connect to my SMB. I'll bring that up. 
put the loop through. All right, so we, we've got it like this, all right? And uh, so that was through itself. And what the loop does, right? This allows you with gloves on, right? Worst case scenario, is you're able to grab this and undo the knot if you need to. So if the knot were here, or if you decided to tie off to something else, right? This is, this is like my Batman uh, utility belt item. I've done lots of things with this. I've tied dead scooters to myself. I've tied lines for marking uh, distances on the bottom. Uh, you know, it could be used if you're going a little bit into a wreck or something, if you're trained for that. Um, it's a real handy, handy dandy thing. I've even tied myself up for it for, uh, for rescue training. Um, so it's a, it's a super, uh, super handy item. And even more handy if you can undo the knot uh, more easily, right? So that would be my recommendation uh, for the end. To have it together, um, the way that this is, right? So I'm gonna wind it up and then I'm going to put the double ender through here and then I'm going to find a home for it in the side, right? And then I've got it clipped there, right? Like this. And now, now I've got a neat little package, right? I can put it together like this and pop that in my pocket, right? Um, once again, I'm using the smaller spool, so it would actually go in my pocket because I've always got it in there, right? Um, okay, let's have a look at the other spool. So this one's kind of an interesting design. Um, I'm getting these from, from Hog recently, high, highly optimized gear. Um, and one of the things that's nice is some folks will occasionally have problems uh, finding whole space to put this double ender in. And this spokes of a wheel is giving you a lot more space to catch um, your spool through, uh, the, the double ender through the spool. And I kind of like this design. Um, downside, I gotta have a disclaimer, this is not Delrin, right? Delrin is like that magical material for guys, you know, people love Delrin. It's, it's highly, uh, highly durable. Uh, not indestructible, but I have broke Delrin things, but it, it's hard to break. This is uh, regular ABS plastic. I've been using some of these a couple of years and they're just fine. Um, but truth told, that's what it is. But I kind of prefer this design actually. Uh, it's a heck of a lot easier to get stuff through. All right. Okay, those are the basics of, of the SMB. Um, next, we're gonna, we're gonna be having uh, a demonstration of how to launch. Okay, divers, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more of this about once a week, I guess even on the off season, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you'd like to come along and join the DDT team and dive with us, go ahead and hit there's another link for that as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon on the beach. Bye-bye.